I think that it was kind of a temporary shift. The one thing that I don't think is ever going to change is that these stylish headphones have made people more comfortable wearing bigger headphones. So I think that is always going to be the case. Um, but there definitely is a shift, and this might be different regionally, but there's definitely a shift right now towards smaller form factor headphones, in-ear headphones are growing in popularity. Um, and I think that's kind of where the market is going. But the one thing that won't change ever, I don't think, is that people are now more comfortable due to headphones like that wearing bigger headphones out and about. It's all dependent on context. Um, if I'm on a plane, uh, at fidelity, sound quality isn't as much my concern as much as canceling the airplane's noises, the din of flying 555 miles an hour. That's what I want to cancel. Um, and then after that, then fidelity. Of course, if I'm sitting at my desk, then it's a different answer altogether. Um, then it's about fidelity all the way. Typically, I'd use a full-size over-ear, typically an open back headphone, sometimes electrostatic, planar magnetic, or a high-end dynamic. Um, and of course, if I'm exercising, um, something water-resistant, usually in-ear. And nowadays, I've been going to a true wireless for, for, for fitness purposes. So the answer to the question is kind of multifold. It just depends on context. Since most headphones, I think, today are still, overwhelmingly most, are under $200, I think the biggest unmet need for consumers today with headphones, for example, is going to be sound quality or performance, solid engineering at affordable prices. I still think there is a ways to go there in the affordable headphone realm. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest unmet need in headphones. Um, then, of course, people are also listening through smart speakers increasingly. And sound quality there is another thing, I think, where we still have a long way to go. Um, because this is how headphones and smart speakers, how we're listening to music today. And I think sound quality um, in the affordable realm of both is definitely the most unmet need. Actually, yes, there, there was a company... Um, I don't know that I'd call them a startup, but they're a smaller company specialized in high-end headphones called Odyssey. Um, some of their headphones are priced upwards of $4,000. Um, but uh, last year they released this, which I think is a fascinating product, and it caught a lot of people off guard, including myself. They've released a gaming headset. Um, but not only did they release a gaming headset, even though their specialty was really high-end headphones, they released a gaming headset that, in my opinion, is probably the most technologically advanced uh, gaming headset you can buy today. Um, so it has head tracking ability, um, so you, the, the sound field can remain anchored and you can move within it. Um, I think it tracks your head position up to a thousand times a second. It can even track in this direction. It's pretty incredible. Um, and this comes from a company that was a high-end headphone manufacturer. Um, so this, yeah, this one really caught me off guard. The future trends in high-end audio, I'm going to answer a couple different ways. The first is the area that I focus mostly on, which is headphones. And uh, with headphones, clearly there is a move toward the what we call the mass premium market. Um, the mass market wants better quality headphones, better sounding headphones. So the acoustical engineering, the engineering behind these products is getting better. But there's also this whole other aspect of headphones, which is virtualization. Um, we are consuming content on our phones, for example, that's not just audio content. Um, so the high-end audio guys probably will listen through uh, headphones in stereo mode for the foreseeable future. But what about other content like movies and even games where we have surround content? Um, so there's this focus on the acoustical engineering, but now you also have to focus on digital signal processing, software engineering as well. So in the headphone market, I think this is kind of where it's going and we're moving toward better engineered products altogether. And then, of course, there's listening to music through speakers, which so many more people, maybe even most people are now doing through smart speakers. So this seems to be the future trend in speaker-based audio is listening through smart speaker type products, no question about it. The requirements for headphones and the way they'll be developed for augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality, 
those technologies introduce, uh, especially for example, say augmented reality, which I think will be a, an immensely popular application for pretty much everyone going forward. Um, the challenges of mixing in virtualized sonic objects with the world we live in and making them seem like they're coming from where this virtual object is placed in the visual field. This is a completely, uh, it, it's, a, it's a difficult challenge. And there are a lot of engineers uh, that are working on that today. Um, I've been to a, both uh, headphone technology conferences for AES, and that seems to be a big focus um, is, is 3D sound, uh, virtualized 3D sound with headphones. So the requirements for the headphones, you know, at the end of all that processing, you still need a good transducer. So there has to be solid acoustical engineering. Um, but again, I think uh, the DSP, the digital signal processing software engineering aspect is going to be uh, immensely important as well. Headphones are becoming maybe a little bit more complex going forward than they have been. Um, I think we're going to have fewer and fewer purely passive headphones. Um, so uh, yeah, that's how it's affecting the headphone market. Yeah, you know, this is one of the uh, one of the more controversial topics in all of high end audio. Um, I'm going to go to a car analogy, as guys often do, and say that even if I don't go faster than 75 miles an hour in my car, doesn't mean I don't want the car to be engineered to go beyond 75 miles an hour. Obviously, I do, and I think there's some element of that with our audio gear. I don't want the audio gear to be made, um, whether it's the electronics or uh, the acoustic. Uh, devices. I don't necessarily want them to be limited to my limitations. I want them engineered beyond that. So there's that element of it. Now, if this is more about the high-res standard, the, the sticker, the high-res certification um, that's quite popular on, on gearboxes you'll see in Japan and other places now here as well, um, I won't, given that the standards for that aren't, as I understand them, very stringent yet, um, it's just showing a response at 40 kilohertz with acoustical devices, I don't buy gear or not buy gear based on whether or not it has that sticker. So until I better understand the standards to be more controlled, more stringent, that's not going to really be very important to me, whether or not it met that certification.